So I'll start with the topic. Uh, uh, I'm sure most of you who are sitting here must have been through this generation where this was a scenario at various places like uh, for banking, for admissions in the colleges, for shopping, for ticket booking. Everywhere there was a cow. And over the last two decades, since my school age, I have seen a huge transformation in the way these things work now. So in the banking, it is all on the mobile now. The admissions are online. Shopping you can do from your mobile. Ticket bookings you can do online. So all these things, in addition, you don't have the queues at the post offices. You don't need to wait for the cabs, uh, food delivery. Everything is online. And the same way, the transformation should happen in the healthcare industry. We have been able to do some transformation. But still, if you see the scenario at the outdoor clinics of most of the government hospitals, it's like this. These are all crowded. The, the long queue outside the OPD is still visible in the government setup. Specifically, you will see that in the private setup also. The medical records are still maintained in such a situation where it is very difficult to you know, pull out a file of patient and find or go through the records of the patient. And all this leads to a poor care for our patients and patients land up in the hospital, leading to large number of admissions because of complications due to diabetes. Now, our country has got some specific problems. We know that we are the diabetes capital of the world. We have around 77 million people with diabetes in the age group of 18 to 79 as per the latest idea of ATLAS. And the number is projected to rise by around 64% in the next 20 years. We have lack of trained doctors who are trained in treating conditions like diabetes. There is lack of awareness among the people. There is there are uh, you know resources are lacking. We are not able to you know provide the best of care to all our patients. Most of the patients pay from their own pocket. The majority of patients are not insured. And these are specific problems in India. And there are tech solutions to address these questions or these problems to some extent. Telemedicine is now picking up online EMR to address the issue of records, patient education and portal for, uh, uh, for patient education. We have a lot of portals and apps which are now available. Majority of these are now being supplied by the pharma companies as well. The patient just need to scan the QR code and they get all the educational material on diabetes. There are apps for specific purposes like for car counting, for calorie counting, for dietary recall and even for dietary advice. There are apps for exercise, for activity tracking. There are apps for reminding you about the pills that you missed and these are supposed to announce the compliance of the patient. So uh, going through a few of these one by one, teleconsultation, I'm sure many of you must have used during the COVID pandemic. And uh, these, uh, the best use of this is that the patients don't need to travel along just for a follow-up visit to you. The patients who are far from you can consult you online through video chat, uh, at least in the conditions like diabetes, where you don't need to examine the patient. The further developments are in progress by which you can even examine a patient uh, through teleconsultation. Electronic medical records, I'm sure many of you are now using and they make our life very easy. You can prescribe the patient, uh, give them an e-prescription. There are several modules for managing your laboratory, for pharmacy, sending the reminders to patients. There are templates for each. So you don't need to uh, repeat writing the prescription or the common advices that you, that you need to give to the patient. So these two things are now being used by majority of us. Online labs and online pharmacies are available. Patients don't need to go to the labs or pharmacies. They can order the medicines and the drugs from their own home uh, just by using the mobile. But then there are several other areas where the development is still on and the uh, you know, acceptance among the healthcare professionals and patients is still lacking. And there's a huge potential to work on that. So different areas that I can touch upon right now will be uh, the developments in the field of glucose monitoring, insulin delivery, screening for complications, treatment of complications. There is a new area that is reversal of diabetes. People are working on that. Digital therapeutics is coming up now. Stem cells and gene therapy are still being tried. And there are newer targets for drugs which are being identified. So in the next 12, 30 minutes, whatever is possible, I'll try to cover that. So as the development has happened, uh, we have all, all gone through these different mobiles uh, that we had earlier. And now we have the latest smartphones. Similar way for the glucose monitoring from glucose meters that we had two decades back. Now we have come to AGP and CGM. And I believe there's a se separate session on CGMs. Uh, so I'll not go through the details of this. But these are the common CGM devices that are being used. In the future, you will have ever since CGM in the country. And it is, uh, you know, it is designed to work for three to six months. So you will have a prolonged period of glycemic profile of the patient that can be tracked just by putting one implant in the patient. But then CGM devices are a little costly and not many people can afford it, especially in our country. So the other option, the poor man's CGM can be the connected meters. So now the glucose meters, they connect with the Bluetooth devices and there are apps which will 
not only record the, the values of the glucose, the timing of the glucose measurement, also the you know food intake or exercise, and then they can give you a profile of the patient for 24 hours if you do the structured SMBG. If you plan the SMBG in a particular way and advise that to patient, just by doing seven to eight times SMBG in a day, you can uh, come very close to CGM by using the connected glucometers. So these are now available in our country. They are not very costly. And I would suggest that we all should start working or using this, at least in the patients where we can't use CGM because of finances. The other area is of insulin delivery. And in insulin delivery, again, we have moved along, uh, you know, last 20, 30 years, there have been several developments. The development uh, in the field of insulin have been already covered by the previous speaker. And the insulin pumps, again, this will be covered in the separate session, I think, after this session itself. So CGM and insulin pumps, I will not be talking about in my presentation. But again, insulin pumps are not very cheap. They are not affordable to patients. And in those cases, you can use these newer devices, which are smart pains and connected pains. So these are the simple insulin pains, but you can have either uh, additional attachment to that pain, or you can use a smart pain, which will record the insulin dose that the patient has taken, the timing of the dose, the amount of insulin left in the pain, and it can connect to the meter, uh, uh, to the smartphone, or the app, and again, it can uh, you know come little close to the insulin pumps that people may not be able to afford. In addition, there are several apps. So for carb counting or for tracking the food intake of the patient, now the apps are available freely in the Play Store and on the App Store. You can advise the patient to choose any of these apps that they like, and they can use it for not just carb counting. There is another app now recently we saw that in which the patients can just take a picture of their meal, and the app will use AI to you know, tell the, um, the distribution of calories and distribution of proteins and carbs and fat in that particular meal. So these are apps can be very useful for the patient's self-management. There are activity trackers that many of us are using now, so I will not go into that details. Uh, these apps uh, will tell you the time that you spend in exercise, the amount of calories that you have spent and all those things. There are different apps with the different glucometer bands, which also give you the glycemic profile over the last few days. Uh, based on the glucose readings that you have taken, they even give you estimated HbA1c based on the glucose values that have been charted. Then there are insulin dose calculators. So you don't need to calculate the progress manually. You just need to put up your ISF uh, for once or total low dose uh, once, and then these apps will calculate the uh, insulin correction doses that you require to be given as a bonus dose. Then there is a new area that is called digital therapeutics. So these are the products uh, which deliver evidence-based therapeutic interventions to patients that are driven by high-quality software programs to prevent, manage, or treat medical disorders. And this is an emerging area uh, in which a lot of companies that you can see on the you know, slide, uh, these companies are investing in this. So these are just software programs, but they are uh, shown or there is evidence to show that these improve the patient's glycemic profile and their uh, overall lives also. Uh, then this uh, area is also picking up and we are now having several startups which are working on diabetes reversal. They claim that they can achieve reversal uh, or remission of diabetes or cure of diabetes. So I'm a little skeptical about that. But at least uh, it is true that uh, by using different uh, variable devices, if you track the patient's overall uh, digital phones for the whole day, you might give individualized advice to patients and that might improve their glycemic profile. Uh, there are uh, there is a new startup uh, that is working even on patients who are pre-diabetics or patients who are at risk of diabetes and in those also it's being used. Now, for the management of complications, the AI-enabled fundus camera is widely available now and I'm sure many of the people sitting here must already be using it. So even a physician like us can now use this camera to take the photograph of the fundus and the AI would help us in interpreting the fundus whether the patient requires a referral or not. Then uh, this is a, a new thing that is coming up for the management of erectile dysfunction in which the shockwave lithotripsy, uh, shockwave which we use for lithotripsy is being used for treatment of erectile dysfunction. It is a little costly and not very effective, but the people are working on improving the effectiveness of this therapy. Then pretty-derived growth factors are being tried for the treatment of erectile dysfunction. For the management of diabetic food, now you have sensory insoles. So these insoles have got inbuilt sensors in them. These sensors Sensors will, uh, you know, uh, sense the temperature of the feet, the pressure points in the feet, and the sensor is enabled so that it will also transmit the data to the healthcare professional. The healthcare provider uh, would uh, always get the patient's, uh, you know, data from the patient's feet, and they can monitor it and advise the patient telephonically for, you know, the care. And uh, this has even been shown to reduce the risk of complications like ulcerations and amputations significantly if the patients are put on these sensory insoles.
there are sensory socks as well. So this is a siren socks, which also which is normal socks only, but then it again um, monitors the patient's uh, temperature of the patient's feet and can predict the development of ulcers in future. Then this is an AI-enabled multispectral wound imaging camera. Uh, this is a very simple mobile app and a camera. And when you have a foot patient uh, who has got an infection, but you are not sure about the infection, whether it's gram positive or gram negative, this AI-enabled camera actually takes the photograph of the wound and tells you uh, whether the infection is gram positive and or gram negative. And it has got a sensitivity and specificity close to 90%. So you don't need to wait for the culture reports. You can start the treatment of antibiotics just based on this image as well. Now, there are several such things, and I just have three minutes more left. So I won't go into details, but we had a separate conference on diabetes and technology uh, a few months back. It was, again, a virtual conference, and there were several uh, such topics which were discussed for a full two days in three different halls, and there are several new things that are coming up. All these videos are available on DocTube, uh, and you can go through this. I will highly advise you to go through these videos to uh, be aware about the new things that are coming up in the area. Uh, in three minutes, I'll just try whatever I can finish. So this is a, a new uh, thing that is BioLink. This is, uh, again, for monitoring the blood sugar levels. It is a CGM, but it doesn't have a needle. It just has got some micro needles. So these micro needles remain in the dermis itself. They don't go into the subcutaneous space. And from there, it is expected to measure the patient's glucose levels. Then there are non-invasive glucose monitoring devices, which are already in the market. They are not very accurate as of now. Uh, their accuracy is being worked on. But there are several options like these watches where you can just put a, a sensor on your watch, on your wrist, keep it changing uh, every seven days, and the watch would uh, monitor the patient's glycemic sugars in real time. These are available in different models. Then this is a non-invasive CGM. So this is just like a uh, CGM, but there is no needle involved. It doesn't uh, need to be picked, and it will keep on monitoring the patient's sugar for seven days or 14 days. Then um, people are working on developing some POC devices, some small devices that can monitor multiple parameters, and you can just use your smartphone for testing these different lab investigations. This is a Sorry, sir, only two minutes left, sir. Yeah. Two minutes. This is a skin patch which is developed by some uh, students from USA, and this simple patch which is stretchable can be put on patients' skin, and it is uh, supposed to monitor not just the heart rate, blood pressure, glucose, and several more parameters. The, uh, the, thing, it, uh, the things are being still researched. It's not in the market yet. Then uh, just like uh, continuous glucose monitoring, uh, people are trying to develop continuous metabolic monitoring in which they will monitor not just glucose, but several other metabolic parameters uh, continuously. Uh, this is a new startup from India itself in which they claim to have developed a thermal scan which just takes an uh, image of the patient's face and tells about the metabolic health of the patient. That is uh, the name of this startup is Aira, Airo. Then uh, this is in smart artificial pancreas. Uh, in this, the blue part that you see, it goes in the abdomen. It has got a glucose sensor. So whenever the glucose levels go beyond a thresh uh, threshold, only then this will release the insulin. The insulin can be refilled through the tube uh, and the part at the other end remains outside the body. You can just refill insulin there. And uh, this blue part acts as a glucose sensor. Then uh, islet cell transplantation uh, is still not very successful. But to make it successful, people have developed a technology by which they ensure that the islet cells that are transplanted are provided enough of oxygen so that they can survive for a longer period. These are smart insulin patches. These are just simple patches and they have micro needles. <coughs> Every micro needle actually has got insulin as well as glucose sensor. So whenever the glucose levels go beyond a threshold, only then the, uh, the patch will burst and insulin will be released. So this can again uh, be something close to artificial pancreas. 4D bioprinting is being used for the treatment of diabetic foot ulcers, where if a patient has got an ulcer, then you can take the picture of that uh, patient's ulcer and you can actually uh, uh, generate a graph which uh, is from the patient's own tissues, grow it in the lab, and then that can be, uh, you know, uh, uh, that can be used, uh, that can be applied to the patient through plastic surgery. And uh, there are several other things which I will not go into details because of lack of time. Uh, adipose tissue is now identified as a new target and people are trying to develop drugs which can uh, induce the browning of the bad fat tissue and that will again improve the metabolic health of the patient. Uh, people are also trying to use some non-invasive medical technology to work on the, the brain stem and uh, through that uh, reverse some metabolic condition. In the stem cell therapy uh, or in the cure of type 1 diabetes, again newer drugs are in the pipeline, uh, um, uh, but they are still in the phase uh, 2 of the trials. So I think I am short of time, so I will just stop my presentation here. Thank you very much for the patient listening.